I already have my little guy traced over onto this one, but I just wanted to show you what we were, where we were going with this. So I'm just going to set him aside and we're going to hope that he turns out just as cute, cute as the first one did. So I'll just set him over there and we'll head on into our painting. So I'm just going to start with a flat brush here and we're going to work in the background a little bit. So because this is more of like a rustic sort of primitive painting, we're going to dirty it up a lot with a lot of burnt umber. So the background is basically a slate gray color, but uh, with a little bit of burnt umber mixed in. Don't mind my messy plate. It's super messy. So I'm going to dip into a little bit of that slate gray and I'm going to grab some of that, that brown too, just to make it. I don't know if any of you had have painted uh, in a primitive sort of style, but a lot of browns and, you know, just to, I say dirty it, but it does. It looks like it's old and rustic. And so we add a lot of browns in there, which it gives it a really neat, a neat look. So that's all I'm basically doing. I'm just mixing in a little bit of that brown into my gray. And you can put as much as you want. Like if you want that to be, you know, a little bit darker, that's all good too. You know, it's all what you like. And I'm just going to turn them upside down because I want to get around my snowman here a little bit. I saw you. So I'm just going to grab in around all these things. I'm not a fan of painting around things because I don't really have the patience, but we're going to do it anyway tonight. And if it gets a little too much brown in there, just bring in some more of your gray and kind of, you know, if this gets to looking a little bit too muddy for you, then just kind of mix it back. All good. All good. All right, so I'm just going to grab my liner brush and get in these little tiny areas. And then we're going to go ahead and start. Now we're here till 1045. Don't, don't let me miss my mark. All right, I'll get stop talking and paint more. All right, so we have our brown and our gray mixed in on our background, and that's looking pretty good. So we'll leave it at that. And then we're going to use a little bit of buttermilk. I have that color out here on my messy plate already. So we'll just get that started, and then we'll give this a good dry before I start basing in his scarf. Oh, I missed a little spot up in here. Missed a little spot. You probably all noticed that too. Right up in here between his scarf. So we'll just get that finished first before I forget it entirely. Here we go. 
All right, so we'll finish with the buttermilk on our snowman. Now forgive me when I'm spinning this around. I don't mean to make you dizzy. It's just easier for me to reach it. We'll get him based in as quick as we can. And then that's when all the magic happens, you know, after we get this boring base coating on. Because really, you know, to me, it is the boring part. The fun part is adding all the little details and the shading and making him. <laughs> yes, I got the spot by this scarf. <laughs> adding all the details is the fun part, I think. We don't want to waste all of our time, all of our fun time, basing things. We are on 45 minute limit. So we need to get crack a lacking, as I say. All right, I will get over here in behind this scarf and I will again come in with my smaller brush so that I can get in here. I'm going to flip him back around because I can see me getting into that wet paint. Tragedy waiting to happen. And then we can go ahead and dry this quick with our dryer and then we will base out his scarf. I'm not going to worry about that snow right, right yet down at the bottom. We can do that completely last. Well, almost last before we put the tree on. So we'll worry about that after. All right. So that's looking good. Clean these brushes out. Get this dryer happening while I'm doing that. All right. So for his scarf, I wanted it to look a little bit rustic, that rustic red brown color. So what I did was, and let me grab my round brush. So I used a little bit of um, red, Tuscan red mixed with a little black. And I kind of just, again, I dirtied that red color down. I didn't want a whole lot of black. I probably just put too much there. But it kind of brings it down to, I don't know if you guys remember that color, um, Rookwood Red it was one of my favorite colors. And I don't even know if they make it anymore but I just kind of wanted it to be a nice dark kind of rustic red color. So that's how I did that. So I just mixed that tiny bit of black in with the Tuscan red. And we'll base in with this. The only trouble with mixing the paint, sometimes you, you know, you're not, you might not be able to mix the exact same color if you need a little bit more, but I don't really even sweat that too much because you can kind of fix that up with adding extra layers of your dry brushing and things like that. So I don't get too worked up about that. Now, if you're basing a large area, this isn't very big, so I didn't mix a whole lot, but if you're basing a large area, you might have to mix a little bit more than I just did. But we just have this small space in here to do. So we'll see how far it gets. All right, and we'll do this long part.
and I just might have to mix a little bit more. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to grab a little bit of that red. I'm going to put a little black in it. I'm off camera right now, but trust that I'm doing exactly the same thing I just did. Ooh, too much, too much black. Just bring some more red in there. So I just proved my point that you cannot mix it exactly the same color. Um, the size I'm using is a number four round on the scarf. All righty. So we'll just, this paint is really super thick, so it's. Super thick. All right, so let's just get this little tiny bit down here. And then we'll get to shading some things. So we're about 15 minutes in. Just get this little point on the bottom here. And again, we'll give that a quick old dry. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start shading out our snowman a little bit. And again, we're going to be using the burnt umber. All right, that's pretty good. So I'm just going to go right into my burnt umber with my angled brush. So I'm just dipping the corner of my brush into that and just working it into my brush. And we're going to come along here, right along the top edge of his scarf. Grab a little more water. All right, let's get some more water on that. There we go. So if your paint doesn't move like that, add a little more water to your brush. And then it will. So I'm just going to come up the back of his head just a smidge. And then we're going to come along the bottom edge of his scarf. And however much of this brown that you want if you want to layer this up sometimes i even like to after the first coat and we might not have time for me to you know play around with that a whole lot because we're on a time frame but if you get your first coat of burnt umber on here and you don't feel like it's dark enough after it dries just go right over it again with another bit and darken it down as much as you want. There's really no rules. And if you want it to look really rustic, add some more. It's all good. It's all what you prefer, really. And I'll just grab a little more water and get that on the bottom. And I'm going to just dry him fast because I want to come down the back side of his... Um, bum here and put some brown in there and I don't want to pull off what I already put on. So we'll just dry that quick. And then we'll come down this back side. Right down to the bottom. And then I'm going to go right along the bottom edge of my snowman. 
clean up some of that. And I think I came up, I just wanted to check, I think I came up a little bit on this side as well. Sorry for my spinning. I just want to come up a little bit over here. Now, this down here isn't quite dark enough for me. I'm going to try and add a little bit more right now, but it might not go on there because it's still super wet. But this is one of those areas that I'd probably, once it dries, that I would come back in here and try and darken that up some. But that's okay. We will work with it. All right, so we're going to shade his scarf, and I'm going to use a little bit of black on that. So I'm going to shade this bottom edge of this little black back piece over here, excuse me. And then we have a tiny little bit of his scarf peeking out over here. And then I'm going to come along this flap here and come down the back side of it. I'm kind of power shading right now. And I'm going to also just come along that bottom edge down here. And then on the back side, just on the main scarf, I want to be able to see that little flap. So I'm going to put a little black there. And then I'm going to go along the bottom edge. Just along that first little curve there. So we have these kind of three little loops here. So I'm going to shade under each of these. There's one there and one here. So I'm just going to shade some black kind of right under those three. So it kind of looks like there's three little folds in his just so it looks like it has a nice fold in his scarf. Now we're going to grab some burnt orange on my shader and we're going to highlight my scarf with the burnt orange. So I got that little piece in there and then along the top edge of this back piece. And I'm going to go, excuse me for flipping, the opposite side of the scarf here. I kind of went out of there. We'll get our orange on this side. And then on the top edge of each of these little, not these little wrinkles here. So we're going to go right across the top of that first one. And right along this edge where the black meets. I want a little bit in there. Now that got a little bright, so I'm just going to grab some water and try and tone that down just a bit. And then I'm going to put a little bit in this next one. And we're not quite done with the scarf. We're going to give it some stripes as well. And the stripes, I want to just add a little bit more of that orange just along this edge here as well. There we go. So I'm going to use a little bit of marigold to give my scarf some stripes. And this is super simple. It's not anything too technical. I didn't um, even think about it really. I just kind of slap some stripes on there. So 
So I'm just going to kind of go in little curves here on each of these little sections. Can you guys see that all right? Like so. And I'm just going to go right straight across my, my scarf here like this. And you could really put any design you wanted on your, if you wanted polka dots, you could do that. You know, it's all up to you. Whatever you like. I just thought some stripes would be fine. I'm going to add another one in here. And then we'll do the long parts. So these ones, I just kind of put some, and I'm not even caring that, you know, they're not getting full coverage. I don't mind that they're just kind of scuffed on there. And I'm not going to go over them again. I'm just going to leave them just the way they are. All right, so that's basically his scarf completed. All right. So now we can go ahead and bring our line drawing back over. And we're going to add, since we're getting down here, we got to get some of these little details on here. So we're going to add his nose and we're going to add these little hearts. We can even add the tree in here at this point. So let's do that. We'll add his hearts on his belly. And we'll get the tree in here. My little primitive tree. And then we'll add his nose and we'll get that going in here. And I'll leave his arms for right now. So his hearts on his chest, on his chest, I did the same as his scarf. I did a little bit of Tuscan red with a little bit of black mixed in there. Kind of just dirtied it down just the same way I did the scarf. All right, so let's just get these little hearts outlined. How are we doing for time? We're doing okay, I think. All right. So we will brighten these up here in a second. I just want to get these based a little bit. So that we can move on to his nose. So this is painted on a four by 12 canvas board. But with these little canvas boards this size, if you wanted to make this bigger, it would fit nicely on a porch leaner. So you could, you know, increase the size of the line drawing and easily paint it on a porch leaner. I use DecoArt Americana. So I'm going to base his nose with a little bit of that burnt orange. We'll get that done as well. Now the snowman face is super simple. It's just his nose and two eyes. So it's not anything too complicated. And his little eyes are just dot eyes. So they're not, again, too complicated at all.
So we got these in here drying. And while they are drying, those hearts and his nose, I'm going to grab some of that burnt umber. I'm going to get the stem for my tree in place. So I'm just going to fill that in with some burnt umber. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Mine certainly isn't. It's a rustic tree, so we want it to look rustic. You know, a little bent, a little out of shape, just like a twig would be. And then these little cross branches, we'll put those in as well. Checking my time here. I don't want to go over. But I want to get them all finished for you. So we're just basically straight lines. Not really straight, but you know what I mean. As straight as possible. It's not really super straight. Nothing about a primitive painting should be perfect, in my opinion. All right. I do water it down a little bit. You're asking if I water down my paint. I do if I'm lining things. Um, I don't always every time for just regular base coating. If it's getting a little thick, like this marigold has been out here a little bit too long and it's starting to dry up, I'll add a little bit of water to it just to get it to move a little bit better. But, you know, it's all, if it's too thick, I will, add, I will add a little bit. All right, so we have all those kind of base. So let's dry those. Right at the top of my main business page, there should be a follow button. Right at the very top of my main business page. Okay, so let us, I want to do a little shading around, around these hearts with a little burnt umber. Again, everything's got to look a little, a little muddy here. That's the whole thing with primitive painting. So we want to get that burnt umber around there. And also around his nose. I want to give a little bit of that in there. That got a little dark, so we're going to get a little water and bring that down, hopefully, a little bit. All right. And then we're going to... So I'm just going to shade the bottom edge of his nose with some burnt umber, as, as I said already. I think I said, maybe I didn't, but that's burnt umber on the bottom of his nose. We're going to give that a quick dry because I want to put a little bit of a lighter color um, on the top edge of his nose. How are we doing, girls? How are we doing? So I'm going to take a bit of burnt umber. I need a little more white. I ran out of white. And a little white. And I'm going to mix that. And it's going to give like a peachy color. So add a little white to that. So it's just going to bring it down to a peachy color. And we're going to use that kind of on the top edge of his nose here. Just as a highlight. Let me get some of that off my brush. There we go. All right, so we gave him his highlight on his nose. 
for these little hearts, I'm going to go straight into that Tuscan red and just kind of shade along that one side. And this is where we're brightening up that heart because it was super dark when we based it. So it just brightens it up. You can see it a little better. It gives it a little highlight. It makes it a little nicer. And you see how when that dries, it really fades down. So again, I usually will go over it a couple times just so I can see it. Reds are funny that way. They will look nice and bright when they're wet, but as soon as they dry, they fade out. So we'll just put another coat on there. All right. So let us go around the end outside of that star just a smidge. I just want to put a little bit of that shading around there. Just put a little red in that brush. Peeking out there. Just want to be able to see my star a little bit. So at this point, I'm going to add the pine needles onto my tree. All right, so I'm going to use a little bit of plantation pine. And before you all come at me and say it doesn't even exist anymore. You're right, it doesn't. But I still had some kicking around here. And if you use Hauser dark green or any dark green, it's just just fine. But I'm going to use this one because I have lots of it and I'm going to use it up. So I'm just going to go on either side of these little sticks and I'm just using my liner brush and I'm just pulling my pine needles kind of out from each of those. Just pulling those in there. Again, they don't have to be perfect. This is a rustic tree. We're going to get all of these in here. And I'm kind of going quick. And I mean, if you get one of these and you, you know, you can take more time with yours. It's just I'm on a time crunch, so I'm going a little faster. All right. I have to admit, it doesn't like to move as well as the Hauser Dark Green off of my brush. It's just a different sort of formulation, this one. It's a little more transparent, I think. That's okay. We're using it. Now, if you wanted to mix in a little bit of a lighter green on your pine needles, you can do that too after you get your first coat on here. Um, and add a little bit of lighter. I didn't. I just used the dark green and called it a day. Now, if you wanted to make this a Christmas painting, you could add a few little Christmas balls off of your tree. You know, you can add anything you like. All right, so let's just finish this last little. We still have a bird up here to paint. Where are we at? 38. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right, tree basically done. I'm just going to add a little bit of white to the top of my star, just as a little highlight here. And then I'm going to outline my star with my liner brush and a little bit of black. And I just did that just, oops, that's a little bit too much water on my brush. Get rid of that black. 
and I did that just because I kind of felt that the star was kind of disappearing in here so I just outlined it a little bit with that I also added while I have my liner in my hand I'm just going to add my little highlight lines here onto my hearts and we'll dry that quick All right, and while we are drying, I'm just gonna add his little eyes and I'm just using my liner brush. I'm just gonna get them on there. And maybe they should be a little bit larger. And we'll dry those while we're here. All right, we're down to five minutes. I don't know if I can do that bird in five minutes. <laughs> but we'll try. We can try. I don't want to smudge his eyes. All right. So let us get this on here. Get his little twig arm. Now his twig arm, I just again based out with some burnt umber, nothing fancy. And the bird, our little cardinal up here, I based with some uh, Tuscan red. And he's on there. So let's grab some of that Tuscan red. All right, so we're just going to base in the bird's body with that Tuscan red color. Now he's kind of a primitive looking little bird too. He's not, you know, an actual real looking cardinal, but we're going to paint him to look like one. And we're painting him quick because we're getting down to the wire. So we'll get this first coat on here and I'll paint out his beak with some marigold. All right, marigold coming in for the beak and we'll dry that fast because I want to add the black to his face and we have to make sure he's good and dry before I do that. All right, so let's, thanks for all the hearts, guys. That's really sweet. I love that. So let's get some black happening here. So I'm just going to wing this because I am down to the wire. So let's just bring this in in a little point like this, a little bit down on his body. And you could, you know, bring your line drawing back over. But because I don't have a lot of time left, I'm kind of just getting it done. I'm going to add another bit of marigold onto his beak. And we'll dry that quick and we can shade him a little bit. All right, so we're going to grab a little bit of black on our angled brush. And I'm just going to shade this bottom edge of my bird right up through the bottom edge of his tail. I'm going to shade a little bit around that black that we put there. And we're going to give him a little wing with this black. So basically all I did was shade outside the edge, kind of just in a V like that, just to simulate a wing. And then I took a little bit of burnt orange on the bottom side of his beak. And then we're going to give him an eye with a little bit of white. Just a dot like that. So 
was basically our bird. Um, and we have one minute left. I'm just going to show you how I put the twig arm in here. There is another one that goes over here, but I'm not going to have time to bring that one in. But again, you'll know how to do the other one once you do this one. And it's just basically burnt umber painted in here with my liner brush. And you don't have to make this perfect. It's a twig. Remember, you don't have to be perfect on the lines. You kind of want to make it look a little bit wonky anyway. Let's go. See if we can get this arm in here. So I'm going to have to leave you to your own defenses to do the other, the other arm, but I think you get the idea. So let's get this last little bit under the bird here, and then I think we are pretty much done. So there we go. My time is up, ladies. Did you see that? We did it. All right. So just imagine he has another arm. <laughs> <laughs> but it does come in here. So you just paint it out the same way. All right. I hope you enjoyed it. By all means, the snow basically is white. We can paint that in with some white once you get finished there. But that's as far as we could get with our little painting. I hope you enjoyed everybody. And thanks so much for joining me tonight. I appreciate it very much. Thanks for all the hearts, the follows, and all that good stuff. We'll see you all soon. Mm -hmm.